Well, hello. Welcome to the Democratic Party of Lake County's 27th annual fundraiser, the first one that is virtual. Our annual legislators barbecue has enjoyed great success bringing Democrats of Lake County together in person. But now we hope to grow the community even more thanks to digital technology. We hope that this live stream will inspire many more local Democrats to join us and help further the progressive cause here in Lake County. The Democratic Party of Lake County's mission is to elect Democrats and to build the community of Democrats within Lake County. Our fundraising goal this year is ambitious, especially in these trying times of pandemic. We hope to raise $6,000 today. We thank everyone who pledged to join our host committee. Thanks to host committee members who paid in advance, we have raised 2,200 before this event even began today. We are already almost halfway to our goal. We'll keep you updated throughout this show. And now here's a word from Deb Bowman, who is chair of the Lake County Democratic Party. Deb? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Whoops, I think my volume was not good. So we do not promise you a technically flawless show today. I'm just warning you. We've never done this before, uh, but we're excited. I'm Deb Bauman. I am not only chair of the Lake County Democratic Party, but I'm also your technical director today. So if anything goes wrong, and it already has, you know who to blame, and that's me. We have all been deeply affected by the passing of a great warrior for the people and for women's rights in particular, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We mourn her losing her at this critical time, but we also celebrate one of the truly great lives of the past century. Three of our elected officials who are unable to be with us today sent pre-recorded messages, messages specifically recorded for you, the Democrats of Lake County. All three were recorded before we learned of the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. If they had been recorded after that, you know the contents would be different. So I ask you to please remember that as you listen to these messages, which were carefully and thoughtfully videoed just for you today. So thank you for being with us. I know there will be tears as well there should be, but I hope that by the end of these two hours, we can also find laughter again and joy in music and shared experiences. I hope that by the time this is over, you feel greater strength and resolve because as we are all well aware, we are in a struggle for democracy itself. And if you have not already joined our Lake County Democratic Party, I hope you will consider doing so. And now I turn it back over to our announcer host, Michael Kimball Auth. Hello again. My name, as you heard, is Michael Kimball Auth and I will be hosting today's event. Uh, I have been a number of things in the 20 years I've been in Lake County, both uh, in front of people and behind the scenes. Uh, I've been a technology person and a teacher, uh, but today I uh, am just your humble host and uh, hope to be a connector between our various opportunities for reflection uh, and learning uh, and celebration as we gather as the Lake County Democrats. Um, our first words will, today will be coming from the Reverend Shannon Kimball Auth, and let me share a bit about her. Reverend Shannon Kimball Auth has long been a community leader. As a pastor for 30 years, the last 20 here in Lake County, she has been a strong voice for the vulnerable, uniting churches, nonprofits, and volunteers in providing for our unhoused neighbors. She led the opening of the first warming center here, providing shelter and warm meals during the cold, wet winters. Pastor Shannon helped form Team Lake County, the long-term recovery group responding to Lake County's devastating wildfires. She is founder and manager of Project Restoration, part of the Community Integration Department of Adventist Health Clear Lake. Shannon is passionate about creating a culture of health to transform Lake County, and I am honored to be her husband. Shannon. Aleha HaShalom, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. May she rest in peace. Ruth was raised in a secular household, but she explained in 2018 that her religious background influenced her life's work. She said, 
I am a judge born, raised, and proud of being a Jew. The demand for justice, for peace, for enlightenment runs through the entirety of Jewish history and Jewish tradition. It is notable that Justice Ginsburg passed on the eve of Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. The name for this holiday in the ancient texts is Yom Teruah, which means the day of shouting or blasting. It is a day to make noise. And Ruth Bader Ginsburg, in her quiet way, made noise her entire life. Traditionally, on Rosh Hashanah, the shofar is sounded, and it was sounded at a vigil at the Supreme Court on Friday evening. Sheila Katz from the Council of Jewish Women noted on hearing it at the vigil that the shofar is a signal for Jewish people to work together. I hope it also serves as a wake-up call for our country. We cannot simply mourn Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We must take action to honor her legacy. Her legacy did not begin nor end with the Supreme Court. RBG is the rare Supreme Court justice whose most significant work began before she joined the court. She changed the course of American law, not as a Supreme Court justice, but as a lawyer, the founder and general counsel of the ACLU's Women's Rights Project. She began the project in 1972, the same year she joined the Faculty of Columbia Law as its first woman professor. By 74, the project had participated in nearly 300 gender discrimination cases nationwide. Ginsburg personally argued six gender discrimination cases before the then all-male Supreme Court, winning five. She built on her victories one by one, establishing precedents that made future victories easier to win. Her legacy was not one moment in time, but a commitment to the long journey of transformation for a nation she knew could be better. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends toward justice, she quoted Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. But it only bends that way, she went on to say, if there is a steadfast commitment to see the task through to completion. If we are to honor her legacy, if we are to walk in her footsteps, then we too must be in for the long journey, step by step, vote by vote, office by office until completion. She was once asked how she would like to be remembered. She said, as someone who used whatever talent she had to do her work to the very best of her ability, to help repair tears in her society, to make things a little better through the use of whatever ability she has. Another time she added, that's what I think the meaning of life is, living not for oneself, but for one's community. Her death on the eve of Rosh Hashanah also has significance in Jewish tradition. One of the themes of Rosh Hashanah suggests that only the very righteous will die on that day, at the very end of the year, because they are needed until the very end. People who pass on Rosh Hashanah are called Tzedetek, the feminine form of Tzadik, which very loosely translated means an offering. The offering and legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg should not be remembered fondly or sweetly. Rather, it is a challenge, an invitation. When we say, may her memory be for blessing, the blessing implied is this. May you be like Ruth. May we be notorious in our passion for the good, the right, and the just. May we be unrelenting in our commitment to community. May we, now ruthless, may we be unrelenting in our support for those who cannot speak for themselves because of systemic oppression. May we be like her. That would be the blessing for ourselves, our country, our party, our world. Zik Rona Livraka. May we be like Ruth. Together, let us change the world. So may it be. 
Amen. Thank you for those words. As we move on, we move from a global view to a local view. And here's some more reflection from a dear friend here in Lake County. Clovis Lewis is a professional cellist and composer who composed his first symphony at the age of 17 and was a professor of computer music at UC Santa Barbara from 1978 to 1986. He has also been a serial entrepreneur and software designer for the past 30 years. Clovis intends to become a Unitarian Universalist minister with an emphasis on breaking down racial, class, and ethnic barriers, and in preaching the gospel of the madness of human self-extinction. He shares with us today from his deeply personal life journey. I'm happy to be here with you today. My comments about Black Lives Matter today are basically in the form of a reporter's notebook. I spend a lot of time in the fox, foxholes of Facebook these days. So instead of a speech about Black Lives Matter, I wanted to give you a flavor of how people are unconsciously responding to the movement, largely through the propagandized lens of Fox News and other far-right outlets. <clears throat> Earlier in the week, a very well-known and respected Lake County right-wing conservative I spar with on Facebook posted a graphic meme showing a picture of a white man and a black man shaking hands. The caption read, I support my black friends, but not BLM. I support my white friends, but not the KKK. I don't support hate groups. Skin color doesn't mean shit. You're either a good person or you're a piece of shit. And my response to him was, please explain to me how BLM is a hate group or how it is in any way com comparable to the KKK. <clears throat> there was no response from the original poster. But one of his friends kicked in to comment, I won't honor or acknowledge BLM in any way until they stop destroying other people's property and stop killing other blacks. Sorry, you're on your own. My response was the following. Is the BLM lynching white people? Have they been doing so for generations? Can you provide any evidence they advocate black supremacy over ra other races? Please show me evidence in any BLM literature or official communications, website, press release, etc., where they advocate for violence. Making a claim that the BLM organization is equivalent or comparable to the KKK is nothing more than an expression of white fragility. And this fragility, this inability to acknowledge white supremacy and systemic racism is so profound for you that it causes you to post such a blatantly ridiculous meme without consciously thinking about how absurd it is. Skin color doesn't mean shit, really? Only a white person steeped in privilege and desperately attempting to erase the past 400 years of racism would write such a comical phrase. And then to double down on your comparison on BLM with the KKK is actually, well, rather pathetic. Blind fear has caused you to abandon reason in this case. I'd imagine if we were not living in such a poisonous and polarized moment, you would step back from this meme to perceive its seething racism. So here's my challenge to you. Find a legitimate source for your claim of equivalence between the BLM movement and the KKK as, help, as hate groups, and I will profoundly, sincerely apologize. Too difficult? Hell, just find a serious non-comedian black person who would say or write, skin color doesn't mean shit. Otherwise, I will consider this as yet another example of how very, very difficult it is for some white people to recognize their own racism. Do you think there was a response to my challenge? Of course not. I found it 
is impossible to reason with people who believe, against any evidence, that the Black Lives Matter movement is not a hate group. We modernists, we lovers of fact, rationality, justice, and science have not recognized the postmodernist world where fact is irrelevant, science is a joke, there are no absolutes, justice is a myth, and the only thing that matters is whatever narrative you can spin to better yourself. We have not recognized this existential threat against reason because like liberal progressives in pre-war Italy and Germany, we see buffoons where others see saviors from a cruel world. American exceptionalism, which proclaims that our values, political system, and history are unique and worthy of universal admiration is, of course, a myth. The effects of this thinking cause us to deny our true racist history of genocide and slavery, and it makes us uncomfortable admitting to, race, to systemic racism and white supremacy in the present. Why? How did we get here? How did we baby boomers, we hippies, so smug, so happy with the liberal changes we made to our nation 50 years ago, fall asleep at the wheel? Well, first, I think we have to recognize that whether we like it or not, we're in a fight for our nation's soul. And in this fight, our opponents will not play by any rules. They recognized a long time ago that the institutions of national government and law we have so lazily relied upon to preserve our progressive gains can be assailed and compromised. We Americans are not exceptional. These days we behave more like third world totalitarian regimes and we need to wake up to that fact right now. We also need to wake up to the fact that the bloodbaths we saw between India and Pakistan in 1947, in Yugoslavia in the 1920s, in Rwanda, and other places where violence erupted along racial and ethnic lines absolutely can happen here. As an ardent student of history, I'm convinced of that. And as a black man living in this nation at this moment, I'm sure of it. Every day, like other members of the Black Lives Matter movement, I vocally and visibly fight against racism and bigotry because I know my life depends on it. I'm here to tell you in no uncertain terms, we must stop Trump and his cult of power now, because all of our lives depend on it. Thank you. Thank you. As we have heard from leaders both nationally as well as locally, we must be vigilant. We must move forward, cognizant of the challenge of our time. With that in mind, we also need to remember that we are community. And as we come together as community, we want to be able to lift each other up. And right now I'd like to introduce Andy Rossoff, who will share some music with us. In his former life, Andy was an attorney providing free legal help to Lake County seniors and low-income folks. He quit the day job a few years ago and now splits his time between Lakeport and New Orleans. When in New Orleans, he can be found busking with his piano on the streets of the French Quarter. Here's Andy. Hello, everyone. So glad to be here with you today. Um, you know, we might all agree that the world is not particularly wonderful at this time. Uh, I'm tempted to recite or describe the parade of horribles, but I won't. What I will say is that we have an election coming up and if we work, contribute and vote, things will get better. Here's my little contribution to that, to that end.
grassy trees of green, red roses too, I see them bloom for me and for you, and I think to myself, Thank you, Andy. Our next speaker grew up in Yolo County and was elected the mayor of her hometown in Winters before she ran successfully for the California State Assembly in 2016. I'm honored to introduce Assembly Member Cecilia Aguiar Curry, and she is also a sponsor of today's event. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Deb, for organizing this. Thank you for Michael, um, all the participants. Um, that last song put a smile on my face because with all so much sadness in the world today, we need to look at things brighter. And as hard as it was to hear about RBG yes, uh, day before yesterday, I keep saying to myself, it's time to mourn for my next couple hours, but it's back to getting to fight. And we need to make sure that um, all of us take uh, some risks, uh, vote, make sure we get our neighbors out to vote, make sure we get people to register to vote. So I wanna thank you for having me today. And um, many of you know that I'm your assembly member and I hope to be reelected by all of you. Um, I love Lake County and from day one, I promised to Lake County that I was going to be committed to all of you to show up for Lake County. And I think that we've done a good job on doing so. Um, you know, one of the things we've had to do since I've been in office is to really educate uh, my colleagues from Southern California to understand what does it, is it like to live in a rural community? And I always go back to the word access, access to healthcare, access to jobs, access to education, access to broadband. Um, there's so many things that we, um, people just assume that we have in our rural communities. But you know, after the couple of years of training and talking to my colleagues, they too are understanding the challenges that we have in the rural communities. And ironically, it is the fires. Um, they are experiencing fires up and down the state of California, and they too can open their eyes and say, this is a much bigger thing, and we need to work together throughout the state and just not think that it's a rural I issue. Um, you know, I just want to share a few things. My priorities for, have always been for Lake County, and they will continue to be, that we must rehabilitate uh, Clear Lake and restore economic vitality to the region. We must protect Lake County from destructive wildfires. We must continue to work on broadband. I recently introduced AB 570 that prioritizes the deployment of broadband infrastructure in the most vulnerable and underserved rural communities. And I will continue to do that. As you can imagine, these bills are really big bills. There's a lot of people that are involved in these. 
And um, I am going to assure you that we will come to the finish line on this in the next, hopefully by January or February. You know, a few months ago, I refused to vote on a, a resources budget trailer bill um, because I had requested from our speaker and the governor for $4.5 million for Clear Lake Blue Ribbon Committee that created the, the research and the mitigation efforts for the lake. Unfortunately, because I didn't vote on the resources bill, I was removed from the transportation committee for defending Lake County. And I would still do that same vote because I believe that we were snubbed and I will continue to work. And if I have to lose committees based on that, so be it. But you were important to me. I was disappointed, but it's not gonna deter me, deter me for continuing to work hard for Lake County and for me to continue to show up and stand up because even in the midst of the pandemic under threat of wildfires, you all are ready to fight and you know what these challenges are like. So Democrats, let's get ready, let's get ready, let's get out there, let's vote, let's elect more Democrats. We need more of us at the table. Um, together we can change the course of history and remove the unfit, uncaring, egotistic, narcissistic, narcissistic uh, individual who, uh, who now occupies the White House. Together we can turn the ship we need to turn the ship around and fight for a better America, a kinder America, and a more inclusive America. So I want to thank you for dedicating all the time that you're doing to get out the vote. This year, every voter will receive a vote by mail um, ballot. So please keep a lookout and mail them back as soon as possible. And be sure to help your family. Just as an example, I received my little um, postcard in the mail to make sure that I lived at the place that I lived, to make sure that my name was Cecilia Aguirre Curry, and I, I submitted that back in. But ironically, some of my neighbors didn't re receive those. So we are now making sure that the elections department at the county are making sure they're not over, uh, uh, there's any kind of oversight that needs to be done for um, some of those people that didn't get the postcards. Um, you can also check your voter status, and please do by visiting the Secretary of State's website. The website says, where's my ballot? SOS.ca.gov. And please remember, it's not too late to fill out the census. Please do your part and tell your neighbors. Um, I believe now I get to introduce somebody. I, Michael, I, is that true? It's my time to, to introduce Jessica Paiska, I believe. Um, but I will go ahead and do it anyway. Um, I want to, um, it's my honor to introduce Jessica Paiska, who I have endorsed as a Lake County Board of Supervisors, District 5. And you think, well, why would you, enter, you know, why her? Very simple. She gave me a call. I went and met with her and had a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, looked her in the eye and said, what are you going to do to help change and be a leader in the county? And she checked off all my check boxes that she was involved in the community already, that she'd gone after grants, that she'd helped with the community center, and that her heart and soul was to do the right thing. And I just want to make sure that you all realize that this is a young lady that is going to be leading, um, that she won't be a follower per se, um, and that she's going to um, be ethical and honest and transparent. So with that, I'd like to um, just say, uh, make sure you, Put your check mark by Jessica. I think she'll do a really good job for all of us. And I look forward to working with her. Thank you for having me today under these difficult times. Uh, but guess what? We can't let down. Let's go Democrats. Let's vote. Let's get people out there. Um, and I would appreciate your endorsement as well. Thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. I can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. And thank you, Deb, for putting this wonderful event together. And thank you to the Lake County Democrats. You've been with me since the beginning, making phone calls, writing postcards, and supporting my cam campaign in so many ways. And thank you to Senator McGuire, who's speaking later, um, for throwing in his support recently, too. For those of you who don't know, my name's Jessica Paiska, and I'm running for supervisor in District 5. We have a choice to make about how we move forward and what our future looks like. I believe in a vibrant Lake County and despite the challenges ahead of us, I believe we are capable of elevating this place we love to the potential we all see. 
My life for the past five years has been in the trenches of long-term disaster recovery, rebuilding my home, community building, fire prevention, economic development, and strategic planning. We are all proud of how Lake County has risen to face so many challenges over the past five years. But it's time to recognize that we are living in a constant cycle of disaster and recovery. And now is the time to be proactive with planning and long-term solutions. We need to learn to adapt, pivot, and still get business done. We have to embrace new technologies and bring back old practices like prescribed burning. But most importantly, we have to work together. Our county is rich with diverse backgrounds and exceptional ingenuity. And it's going to take all of us collaborating to solve the great challenges ahead of us. I am fully committed to doing whatever it takes to make Lake County stronger, safer, and prepared for whatever comes our way. So please vote for me, Jessica Paiska, for Supervisor D5, if you're living in District 5. Thank you so much, Deb. Great. Thank you for those messages, both of you. And now a quick update. We are continuing to fundraise on the phone, and you see the phone number here, or the online connection you can make on the Facebook page. And we're doing very well. We're moving along. Uh, we're up to, it looks like, close to 3795 that's excellent dollars there. Uh, we've just uh, received a note that we have a check from 750 uh, from uh, Sereno Property Management. We thank them very much for their uh, coming alongside us and joining in this team uh, that will uh, make us uh, uh, stronger as we move forward. I wanna now introduce uh, Clovis again and Carol Cole Lewis, who are the regular musicians at the Unitarian Universalist Community of Lake County. And today they'll, today they'll be sharing a cello solo version of the oneness of everything. Hello, everybody. I'll leave Clovis's words stand as he said them. Just one word I have. Vote. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Next up, we have Lake County Board of Supervisors, District 4 Supervisor Tina Scott. Tina has been representing District 4 since 2016. Tina. Good afternoon, Lake County. I am honored to be with you here today. I am District 4 Supervisor Tina Scott, and I would like to start today by thanking you for my landslide victory in March, giving me four more years to work for the citizens of Lake County. And I promise I will do this work as a beloved Ruth Bader Ginsburg would want it to be done, to quote her. If you want to be a true professional, you will do something outside yourself, something to repair tears in your community, something to make life a little better for people less fortunate than you. That's what I think a meaningful life is, living not for oneself, but for one's community, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Can you even imagine how different life would be if we all would adopt that way of thinking? It, it would just be absolutely incredible. Well, I, I wish I was addressing you today in person, but as you know, 2020 has something a little bit different in mind for us this year. What a crazy year. Who would have ever thought that Zoom would be the replacement for going out? I know I would have lost that bet. But lucky for us, we have the ability to continue our work, even if we have to look inside the box to do so. I would like to share how grateful I am for all living in Lake County. We are no stranger to devastation and disaster, yet we rise each occasion to help our neighbors out. For this, I could not be more proud. But with this, 2020 seems to be the opening of the portal to hate and anger. I thought for sure that Lake County would not succumb to this madness, but sadly we have. I have seen and heard more rage from our community in the last six months than all my years in Lake County put together. After the election in November, when we remove that cancer from our White House, we will have much work to do to reverse the damage that is done to the hearts of our community. I know this can be done because it was not that long ago that we respected each other regardless of our differences and worked together for a better tomorrow. This can be done because I have seen Lake County in action. For example, Lake County is a leader when it comes to collaboration. I have even been asked by outside counties how we are able to get so many leaders at the table willing to find solutions to our largest problems. Our work will come down to relationships and respect and we have those relationships and respect. I don't believe any other county in California can say this about themselves, that they have that, and that they have the collaboration. Did you know that Hope Rising not only has government agencies at the table, but nonprofits, education, health leaders, working together to push that dreaded health ranking needle? This is going to be no small feat, but I know we will find positive change in years to come because of our amazing collaboration. We know that the work cannot be done by one person, but it will take all of us working together to find that positive change. Again, I am thankful to be your supervisor and promise to work hard for Lake County. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Zabdi Nariya, and she is running for a seat on the Kanakta Unified School District School Board this November. She is a local and an alumnus of Lower Lake High School and now acquiring her master's in social work. She is a children's mental health specialist now and she's dedicated her life to serving the most vulnerable populations in a variety of roles. She believes in the power of community and that together we can achieve anything indeed. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I am extremely honored to be here with everyone today. Um, I have looked up to a majority of 
everyone who's speaking here today uh, for, I guess, all my adult life. So I am just thankful to be a part of this amazing community, this amazing group, and am thankful to have this platform to speak. Uh, a common theme that I've heard today is the power of community. And one thing that I've learned as a social worker, as a mental health professional, as a local is that nothing can be done by ourselves and that we need every single person on the table to work together to build a better tomorrow. I have prepared a little speech here today, um, but I'm hoping that uh, most of it will, will just kind of come. <laughs> so I am running for Canocta Unified School Board because uh, I've mentioned before that I, I believe that every single person has something to bring forward. And my goal is so that we can bring everyone together, voices that have not been heard for quite some time, and ensure that we are listening to their needs. It is only that way that we are able to get the tailored services, the tailored education system that we need to serve the youth of our community. We have youth who are foster youth, who've experienced trauma. We have English learners. We have a variety of community members who all require specialty uh, tailored education. And I believe that by having me on the school board that I will be able to bridge that gap. Now, before I sign off, I want to remind all of my community members, this is a special message for my friends, my colleagues, my family members, every single person that knows me as a special favor. I urge you all to check your voter status tonight. I would like you all to put it on your calendar, November 3rd, to go out and vote, if not to vote for me, but to pay attention to what's going on locally, nationally, and take part of this democracy that we care so much. I hope that we all do our part and at the end of the day, make RBG proud. Thank you all for having me. Thank you. Our next entertainer lived in Lake County for 23 years. He's appeared on Showtime, FNX Network, Amazon Prime, and on his own dry bar comedy special, Midlife Crisis, Midlaugh Crisis. Please welcome Mark Yaffe. Hey, thank you, uh, Mark Yaffe here, a former Kelseyville uh, resident, uh, recovering Republican. And uh, I live now in uh, Northern Nevada, uh, Trumpganistan is what I call it here. It's uh, uh, a little scary, I live in a place called uh, Sparks, Nevada. Here's a pro tip, Lake County. Uh, don't move to a place named after a dragging muffler, okay? Um, my neighbors are, it's going to lean a little too conservative. My neighbors are all about Trump, ammo, and camo, okay? My neighbor's truck has a Trump tailgate, Melania mud flaps. So these people are not messing around, all right? We have 40 plus days to go. The Supreme Court is in the, hangs in the balance with RBG's passing. And uh, President Trump just released a short list of nominees. He's, uh, he's uh, proposing either uh, Judge Jeannie Pyro from Fox, Yankee Slugger, Aaron Judge, or a judge from Miss Universe. And if President Trump says if he's reelected, he will ask for four more years. And, and I'm pretty sure Putin will say yes. Think about it. The Supreme Court is on the line. Health care is on the line. If Obamacare gets repealed, Trump care will replace it with hydrochloroquine, Lysol and a discount coupon to WebMD. And don't think this election won't directly affect Lake County, all right? Uh, to commemorate his corporate tax cut, uh, President Trump wants to change uh, Glen Haven to Tax Haven. And uh, the rumor is uh, President Trump wants to carve his likeness onto Mount Canocti with the comb over on top. We cannot let this happen. So please, uh, whatever you do, Lake County, get out the vote, get your family and friends to vote. Let's get Trump out of the White House and where he belongs into the big house. And uh, good luck and please uh, remember to vote. Thank you so much. Our next speaker uh, is our state senator, Mike McGuire. He grew up uh, in a family that farmed prunes and grapes for several generations in nearly half a century. He started serving as a school board member when he was 19 because he insisted on rebuilding dilapidated schools in his hometown. He went on to serve as a council member and mayor of Healdsburg and a Sonoma County supervisor. Mike was elected to the state Senate in 2014. At our barbecue in 2019, Mike wowed Lake County Democrats and raised a record amount as our dessert auctioneer. Mike McGuire is also sponsoring today's event and we thank him for his support. Good afternoon, Lake County Democrats. I gotta tell you, I am so thrilled to be with you 
Hey, I think we need to give it up to Mark. It is hard to do comedy without any uh, clapping. Nice job to Mark. And I also want to take a moment to be able to say thank you to Deb. Uh, as our chair here in Lane County, she puts in the blood, sweat, and tears each and every day. She's leading this party forward all throughout the county. And I think we need to take a moment and give a round of applause to Chair Malman, please. Deb, we love you. Thank you, this would not be happening without you today. Uh, it has been incredibly stressful to be able to put together this virtual event and it would not have happened without her and all the members of the Central Committee. And just wanna say how grateful we are. Uh, I wanna also uh, acknowledge uh, Assemblywoman Aguiar Curry. We are so lucky to have the Assemblywoman working on behalf of Lake County in Northern California. It's always good to see her and grateful for her partnership. And on behalf of the Assemblywoman and I, we just want to say thank you to Supervisor Scott and Supervisor Sabatier, of course, Supervisor Simon, who was uh, with us. And we can't wait to see Jessica kick some serious tail coming up on November 3rd. I uh, know it's going to be great. And I see our retired Supervisor rushing with us. Thank you, uh, ma'am, for all of your work as well. What I'd like to be able to do today very quickly is talk about uh, where California is at in this incredibly challenging time. But first and foremost, we need to acknowledge Ruth, Ber Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Let's be honest. Uh, she has been a force, a force across America for equal justice, justice for every American, no matter your skin color or your gender. Uh, and we owe her a debt of gratitude for being such a trailblazer. And let's be honest, that's what the Democratic Party stands for, is inclusion uh, and equal justice for every American, no matter uh, your background. Uh, and we have seen firsthand the challenges that this nation is facing with the Donald Trump virus and this recession that has come about due to the pandemic. Uh, we're seeing record unemployment across America. We are seeing now over 200,000 200, individuals who have now passed away due to the coronavirus. We can and we must do better. We will do better with Joe Biden as our president. Uh, and we have to continue to organize and mobilize to be able to get the vote out. So where are we at here in California when it comes to all issues of the coronavirus? Number one, you're gonna see changes in regards to our testing regimen. You're gonna see a guaranteed 48 hour turnaround time here this fall for any individual that goes into a state testing site. Number two, we're expanding our lab capacity across California to make sure that we are taking care of both small communities and large cities equally. And that is just as important to myself and it's similar one Aguirre Curry as it is to a big city mayor like uh, Mr. Garcetti. The other piece that we're really focusing on is advancing rapid testing for all school employees in every school in the state of California. If we hope to open schools up long term, we need to ensure that all school staff and students have the ability to access a test uh, in rapid form. We'd like to very quickly talk about the issue of a vaccine. We continue to hear Donald Trump say that we're gonna have a vaccine uh, here by the end of the year. According to the UC system, which is uh, one of the most successful uh, public uh, hospital systems in the entire United States, there is not a chance that we're gonna see a widespread vaccine until the first or second quarter, the first three to six months of 2021. Uh, so that is a real deep concern that the uh, president continues to overpromise, and we're very concerned that he's going to be able to under deliver on that. And that is an issue that we are uh, continuing to watch. On the issue of fires, the state of California is now investing an additional $85 million into CAL FIRE this year. We're hiring additional 179 full time firefighters, another 350, 350 seasonal firefighters, and we're investing $5.3 billion in the K-12 public education to be able to bridge the digital divide that we're seeing with the coronavirus. This 5.3 billion will mean millions of dollars coming in for Lake Mendocino, Sonoma, Humboldt, as well as Trinity counties. Uh, and it is absolutely critical that the students in rural California have the same access to technology as those who are in the San Francisco Bay Area. Climate change. Despite what the president says that we're going to be going through a cooling period in this earth, that is a bunch of crap, uh, we are going to continue to see warming temperatures. And here's the facts. The United States wildfire season, the United States wildfire season here in the West has gone from 172 days in the 1970s to 222 days today. The average summer fall temperature in California is up two and a half degrees since the 1950s. Climate change is real and it's making these fires, which we have all lived through 
from the Valley Fire all the way to the Mendocino Complex Fire, as well as the August Complex Fire, we all know that it's getting worse and it's deeply unfortunate that we have the chief climate denier in the White House, which is why we need to work so hard. And let us not forget 57% of forest land in California are owned and managed by the federal government. I wanna end it right here uh, before uh, Chairwoman Bauman starts throwing her shoe at the screen and telling me to wrap it up. Uh, and that's talking about, I think, one of the biggest ills that we have in our society today. Uh, and that is income inequality. Uh, my mom worked for 21 years as a bank teller. Her average retirement right now from that bank is $481 a month, $481 a month. When we talk about income inequality, it's women and kids who we need to focus in on. Two thirds of minimum wage earners in this state, two thirds are women. That is why California has now passed the strongest equal pay law in the nation, where it is now illegal to pay a man more than a woman when it comes to equal work. And that is why we also just passed one of the nation's strongest uh, laws for family leave. Not only does an individual get eight weeks uh, paid family leave, they're gonna get additional 12 weeks unpaid family leave, but they're guaranteed their job back uh, at the end of that leave. It is gonna benefit women and kids across the state and California is gonna continue to lead the way. This election is the most important of our lifetime. The values of this nation is at stake. Our democracy is at stake. This is gonna be an all male election. We encourage you to be able to get that vote by mail ballot, which will start being mailed out on October 5th and either get it in early to uh, the postal service or walk it into the registrar of voters. Uh, it is absolutely critical that we fight we organize, we mobilize, and we kick Donald Trump out of the White House. Again, Madam Chair, thank you for your incredible work. To the entire Central Committee, thank you for your efforts. I'll turn it back over to Michael and say thank you for allowing me to participate here today, uh, and we love Lake County. Thank you, Senator, and thank you for your words. We uh, want to take a moment to remind everybody that sharing is caring. Uh, please do uh, hit share if you are connected to the Facebook uh, live feed. It would be great to get this word out as we share uh, in our community uh, activities and uh, the opportunity to uh, move forward together. Our next speaker is Denise Rushing. She has served two terms on the Lake County Board of Supervisors, uh, where she is best known for environmental advocacy and community revitalization. She holds a bachelor's in environmental engineering from Stanford University, a master's degree in culture and spirituality from HNU, and is a registered mechanical engineer specializing in energy efficiency. Denise is passionate about human scale solutions to global challenges. The author of four books, today she writes and creates at Dancing Tree People Farm, Organic Farm in Upper Lake. Thanks for your leadership. Go ahead, Denise. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, Deb, and thanks, Michael, for having this event. This is amazing. Um, 2020 has been, uh, at some level, uh, has dealt this horrifying set of events. A couple of days ago, we lost Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and I find it hard to even talk about it without getting a little choked up. Um, two months ago, we lost John Lewis. Along the way, we've lost over 200,000 of our fellow citizens to COVID-19, and we've already um, we, we really don't know how many people we've lost because we are not able to trust what's coming out of the federal government. Uh, we feel that the federal government is lying to us, so we've lost trust. All of this is playing out as we're fighting a war to save our democracy, as others have said before me. And as bad as 2020 is, we all know the situation could get worse. We know that more people will die from COVID. We know the political discourse is already ugly, and of course it's gonna amp up in the next six weeks. Um, it would be very easy for people, citizens, to think that all is lost and that they should give up. And it's our job to not let that happen. Um, succumbing to fear and despair, I really wanna talk about our mood because uh, it's possible with all that's happening to be afraid and it's possible to feel despair. And I'm asking everyone on this call to push the pause button on all those feelings, pause for at least six weeks. Um, fear and despair play into the autocratic playbook. Um, they play into Putin's playbook. Uh, if you feel discouraged, if you feel jaded and hopeless, um, it leads to wanting to give up. And they want you to do that. 
That's the bottom line. Um, they want you to imagine that hanging out online, sharing emotionally charged uh, Facebook posts with other fellow Americans is somehow actually helping. They want you to call the other side names. They want to pit Americans against one another. The only thing that will put our country back together is life itself, choosing passion for life itself and choosing life and to work like heck for the next six weeks. It's no coincidence, by the way, that our culture as a whole is attracted to hero movies, the hero's journey. Why is that? It's because the hero's journey is a myth for our time. When, the, when things get tough in the hero's journey, the hero's about to die, um, they don't curl in a ball and, and quit. Um, that's why we love these movies. We see ourselves in them. Think of the movies that have captivated your imagination. Harry Potter could have given up when Dumbledore died. Sam and Frodo, Deb, could have given up when the spider attacked and, and looked like he had killed Frodo in the caverns of Mordor. Um, Dorothy could have given up when she was trapped in the witch's castle and was mocked by the witch over missing her Auntie M. Luke Skywalker could have given up when Obi-Wan Kenobi died, or again, when his hand was cut off by Darth Vader. These are the myths that keep playing in our psyche of our, of our country. And it's now time for us to collect and become the hero in our own hero's journey. So here's my message to you. Make a choice to set aside fear or despair. It doesn't mean you don't feel them, just set them aside for now and find your heart of passion, fueled by gratitude and love to propel you for the next six weeks. Gratitude and love for the democracy that John Lewis stood for and how hard he fought for us. Gratitude and love for Ruth Bader Ginsburg and how she fought to her dying breath for justice. Gratitude and love for the fellow Americans who are fighting alongside you and even those who have been conned by all the lies. Gratitude and love for our forests and the wildlife and our beautiful, beautiful planet. The gratitude and love for life itself. And here's the good news. Number one, we can win this. Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death has galvanized support for not only electing Joe Biden, but also electing a Democratic Senate. Millions of dollars have poured into the Democratic Senate races in the past few days because of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We've got momentum and we can win the election. Number two, there are a lot more of us, a lot more of us. Here's some simple math for you. There are 3,141 counties in the United States of America. If there are roughly 100 people watching this call, maybe 50 on Facebook and 50 watching it after, 100 people watching this call, assume that the top 100 people in each county um, are galvanizing their support right now. If each person on the call committed to 50 voter contacts, 50, I'll go for 100 personally at least, but 50, postcards, phone bank, other kinds of outreach. If that outreach were only 33% effective, we would have 5.2 million more votes. 5.2 million. So each of us commit. And number three, time is on our side. The election is already happening right now in some states. So there's no time for self-pity, self-doubt, or anything resembling discouragement or despair at this moment. We can mourn later for all that 2020 has dealt us and taken from us. For the next six weeks, we're in the battle of our lives and we have to leave it all, all on the field. So volunteer, phone bank, make sure your neighbors are registered to vote, that you're on the voter rolls and registered. I'm gonna close with saying you can donate and I'm gonna close with a, a quote from Winston Churchill. Never give in, never give in, never, 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 never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the foe. Let's get to work. Thank you, Denise, for lifting up our true heroes, Justice Ginsburg and John Lewis. John Lewis spoke of good trouble. We speak of the good fight. And now I want us to turn our attention to good measure. Good Measure is a five-piece acoustic group making their own style of music influenced by folk, pop, rock and roll, jazz, Cajun, country, and bluegrass. Please welcome Bill Bordiso, Ingrid Larson, Doug Harris, Cisa Nelson Harris, and Richard Vassaleros to the stage. 
Hello, Lake County Democrats. I'm Cesa Harris, and I want to speak for good measure in saying that we join many others today who honor the memory of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was and remains a personal hero, and I am forever grateful to her for the many opportunities that opened up for me and all other women due to her work. To her family and her mourners, we say, may you suffer no more and may you be consoled. We're also here to help make some good trouble through music. So with three-fifths of the Good Measure band, Bill Bordy, so on accordion, Doug Harris on guitar, and me, we're going to cover an Old Crow Medicine Show song, I Hear Them All. If you know it, please sing along from wherever you are. One, two, three. I hear them all, I hear them all, I hear them all. Wonderful, thank you. In 1990, Mike Thompson was the first Vietnam veteran elected to the California State Senate. He served in combat with the U.S. Army as a staff sergeant platoon leader with the 173, 173rd Airborne Brigade, where he was a wounded and received a Purple Heart. First elected to Congress in 1998, Mike Thompson represents California's 5th Congressional District, which includes all of Napa and parts of Contra Costa Lake, Solano, and Sonoma Counties. Mike Thompson is also a sponsor of today's event. We thank him for his service and his support. Now here's his message. Hi Democrats, thanks for inviting me to be with you to celebrate uh, the party with the party. I'm sorry that uh, this year we're not able to do it in person. And you always do a fantastic event and it's great to see everybody and to, and to be with everybody. Uh, I'm just sad that we can't do it that way this year. 
this is a, a tough year for us uh, with COVID, which has caused us to be apart and then uh, exacerbated by the fires. And there's nothing worse than uh, the, the situation we have in the White House today. So uh, we've been hit from every direction imaginable. But uh, we'll get through this and before long we'll be back together. But until then, we've got some work to do. We've got to make sure that we maintain the majority in the House of Representatives. We've got to make sure that we win the U.S. Senate. And we've got to make sure that we throw this guy out of the White House and elect Joe Biden president of the United States of America. You know, the stakes have never been higher. This is, and I know every time I'm with you, I tell you that it's the most important election of my lifetime and your lifetime. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, it has been, and this year is no exception. This year is the most important election of all of our lives time, lifetimes. And make sure our neighbors, our friends, our families, everybody gets their ballot in. Every ballot is counted. And we're going to see a new tomorrow with Joe Biden in the White House, a democratically controlled Senate, and a House where we maintain our democratic majority. So thank you all very much for everything you're doing. Hang in there. We'll get through this, and we're going to see a better tomorrow. Our next guest is Georgina Marie, and she is a poet from Lakeport here in Northern California. She is the current Lake County Poet Laureate for 2020 to 2022, the first Mexican-American and youngest to serve in this role for Lake County. She has organized and hosted a variety of writing events in Lake County prior and during COVID-19, one of which was Dreaming America, a reading for immigrants in detention centers, which includes a variety of poets and readers from California and beyond. Here now is Georgina. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me for this event tonight. As Poet Laureate, I think it's very important to speak up, at least for me, to speak about racial injustice and other things that should be spoken about by this role. So I wanted to read a poem tonight um, in honor of my poster back here, Black Lives Matter. And this poem is an original poem called All Lives Don't Matter Until Black Lives Do Too. The regalia blue with the gold star and silver restraints. The men kneeling down on him. The pressure like a dark night sky collapsing onto his neck. In the night, it's not sleep, but hopelessness that claims me. And even if I don't have the fear, I have the fear of not being able to breathe. When I introduce myself to my neighbors, my unfriendly neighbors, they only wonder how a brown girl could speak English or tend to her property, keeping it tidy and obedient to the law. They look at me as if I don't belong living next to them in an orderly house with my Mexican looks. I worry if they'll poison my dog or kill my cat. Even then, I still don't worry that if they call the police, I won't be able to breathe. As the prompt goes, you won't need your happy pill in the afterlife. You will be whole again. Maybe dark skin will be lighter so you can live longer. The knee lifting softly off of your neck in time for a deep, deep breath. And I'd like to read a few short poems from the book Dreaming America by Seth Michelson, who um, wrote, created, edited this book. And the poems in this book are from teen, well, youth actually, as young as nine or 10, who were immigrants in detention centers in a maximum security detention center here in America. And these poems are very brave from those children. And this is another, another thing that we need to work on to make this country a better place. We need to have these children released from these detention centers and these cages, and we need to vote. We need to, to make this change, make this happen. So these are three poems by these children. The first one is untitled. I tried to kill myself six times without succeeding, but I know that day or night, the moment will have to come when from a slip, I'll lose my life. And that's why I don't long to become a poet or scientist or pastor or president or to become someone prestigious because what's the point of knowing so much 
if with a blow to the head, I'd forget everything unable, even to remember my name. From the earth. From the earth grew a fruit, so delicious, I paused to wonder who harvested this fruit. And I'll read one more. This is called, I want to support. I want to support the poor and end hunger. I'd like to give a great place to live to those without one and also to the animals. Again, these are poems from children in detention centers. Thank you, Deb and Michael and Julian for inviting me tonight. Thank you for that sharing. Now we hear from a group who will uh, share some music. First uh, of the group, Herb Gura is a longtime Lake County resident, former school board member and progressive advocate. Bill Bordiso is a retired fourth grade teacher. And Michael Richardson is a longtime musician who produces the concert series at Four Family One. He came together especially for today's performance of Herb Gura's original song about the COVID-19 pandemic, Droplets of Doom. We are Richardson. Rodiso and Gura, but you can call us RBG. Some of you might have heard there's a virus going around, and this is a song about that virus. <laughs> Droplets of doom all over the room. Surfaces unsafe to touch. Stock market crash, there goes your cash, feeling like it's just too much. Shelter in place, don't touch your face, wash your hands so thoroughly. If you're smart, you stay six feet apart, and try not to board the TP. Stay in your house. Don't kiss your spouse, cover your nose if you sneeze. And baby West, please wear a mask so you won't spread this disease. If you feel off and start to cough, better to stay home in bed. You're not allowed to be in a crowd. That's what the governor says. There's an onslaught of germs on your lips, as deadly as deadly can be. Whoever thought that the apocalypse would have zombies too tiny to see? Empty store shelves, everyone for themselves. People who are rude and uncouth. Don't trust the prince, cause what he says probably isn't the truth. On the TV, quite constantly, news is unusually bleak. COVID-19, viral and mean. Spreading around as we speak. Droplets of doom all over the room. Surfaces unsafe to touch. Stock markets crash. There goes your cash. Feeling like it's just too much. Feeling like it's just too much. Feel it like it's just too much. Hey friends, I'm a Bernie supporter and I'm gonna vote for Biden and I wanna urge all the other Bernie supporter friends of mine to do the same. Very good, thank you. Our next speaker represents Lake County's District 1 on the Board of Supervisors, Moke Simon. Good afternoon, Democrats. Thank you for the invitation today to speak uh, at the uh, party party. So um, I appreciate the opportunity to come to you today to just encourage everyone to get out and vote. 
uh, was spoken earlier by uh, quite a few of the representatives that have spoken before me, how important this election is to everyone. Being no prouder than being um, one of our first Native Americans elected here in Lake County as a Democrat, but also as a Native American, it just it's so important that we get out there and do our part and vote. This election is going to come down to uh, the wire, I believe, but we can win this thing. And we just need to work together to accomplish that. Every year I think I've been elected, I've attended the party or the fundraiser. Sorry, it's a virtual one this year. But I know that there are folks still out there working diligently to make sure that we're successful come November 3rd. From a Native American standpoint, always fighting for the rights of others, always fighting for the ones that need the help. And running for office, that was always my goal. As a public servant, it's something that I keep at the bottom of my heart is to help the weakest link. And in this country, the weakest link is the ones that always need the hands up. And at this time, we need compassion, we need love, and we need understanding of different cultures to come together as we move forward in the United States. Couldn't be any prouder in Lake County that we now have two Native Americans serving on the Board of Supervisors. It's not only a historical landmark, I think it's just a great, you know, opportunity for the citizens of Lake County to be served by uh, each and every culture that lives in Lake County. Today's party hopefully will run, raise plenty of funds and we can stay focused on the November 3rd election and continue our work to move forward with a compassion like no other party has in this country towards the folks that are most needy and also to give them a hand up. I want to thank you very much for today uh, and the opportunity to speak. Everyone who spoke today has just been eloquent in their words, but came with the same message. We need to just keep fighting, as we always do. We need to win this one and keep a positive message for the rest of the country. I do want to give my condolences to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was an inspiration to all people and compassion. That is my message for today. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Simon. I want to give us a brief update. We are getting closer and closer to our fundraising goal. Remember to share this video out. Also, you have, point to the right number, the right number here to call in for a possible donation. There is Act uh, Blue uh, by check. And I've just been given an update here. Uh, we've had uh, several, oh, uh, four, four just recent people calling on donating on Act Blue, uh, but that's great. We also want to uh, uh, call out the winning bidders on our auction items. Um, first, we had our beautiful fine art print donated by renowned local artist Ben Van Steenberg III. The winner bid, winning bidder is Dirk Sluten from Clear Lake. So thank you very much for your support. I think you will very much enjoy this and uh, critical for your participation. Thank you so much. Item two is a custom dream cake made to order for you, uh, donated by Tina Scott. And uh, the winning bidder is the Jordans of Lakeport. And thank you so much there. I am sure you will also very much enjoy your winnings. Item three is uh, the wine and flag flown over the capital. Capital. This is the wine that is labeled from Mike Thompson's vineyards. Uh, Congressman Mike Thompson has uh, offered these, and the winning bidder for this is Stephanie Pawa from Hidden Valley Lake. Thank you so much for your support. I'm sure you will enjoy your winnings there. Uh, we have item 4A. Uh, it was a women's t-shirt and Rise Up CD donated by Roy Zimmerman. Uh, the winning bidder there is Justine Schneider from Cobb. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoy that. And item 4B, men's t-shirts and Rise Up CDs donated by Roy Zimmerman. The winning bidder there is, uh, it turned out, it's our own Deb Bowman here uh, from Upper Lake. Uh, the grand total on all of that ended up being uh, it's, it's almost $900. Excellent. Thank you so much again for participating in that. And uh, as we uh, continue our program here, I want us to uh, now turn our attention to 
Uh, our next speaker, Gilbert Rangel, is a Lake County Democrat running for Kelseyville United Unified School District Board. Uh, Gilbert has 20 years experience working in the government and nonprofit sector, focusing on programming in the areas of youth development, education, and migrant communities. Uh, currently, Gilbert serves as the director for the Lake County AmeriCorps program, which is focused on empowering youth to become successful in their education. Gilbert's vision for the Kelseyville United Kelseyville Unified School District is for all stakeholders to work together towards progress so that every student has equal access and opportunity to a meaningful education. Here's Gilbert. Thank you and good afternoon fellow Democrats um, for having me here today and being able to share a little bit of my perspective as a Democrat and a person that really cares to see uh, Lake County move in the right direction. As uh, Michael mentioned, uh, my um, background and, and experience and, and, and uh, perspective comes from that of education all the way from preschool to uh, college educated individuals and um, and one thing that resonates with me primarily and why I urge everybody to vote is in, in, in the spirit of democracy is that uh, the issue of uh, equality and equal opportunity is still predominant in, in our educational system right um, and it's not necessarily that we have people trying to defeat equality, but it's the circumstances that exist that uh, put places individuals at a lesser opportunity than others. But it is it does take individuals to step up and do the right thing. And as Supervisor Simon said, do it with compassion to be able to help everybody and give everybody a hand up in a situation. I can say that uh, from the most recent in situation and experiences with the pandemic for instance we came to discover in the education community that many students do not have access to the tools and resources necessary to be able to perform and uh, attend their digital learning requirements so this is a issue for me of an issue of equality right because where some students that might be more fluent can afford uh, laptops internet access and such other students do not have those tools then they are falling behind so it is my um, goal that even within my career or as a school board member uh, to be able to promote that and, 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 and keep a vigilant eye to everybody's needs and, and help all individuals uh, attain and, and, and receive the resources necessary to be successful. That is the, um, the biggest part of my mission and my work and my candidacy and, and my personal life is that no one should have a lesser opportunity to be successful, right? Um, I look at uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her legacy, right? Even though, you know, she's no longer with us, um, her legacy will remain. And a big part of her legacy was equality, right? So um, for me is that as Democrats, we continue uh, fighting for that. We continue moving forward for that. Um, if you have friends that for some reason uh, don't believe in the vote, you know, a lot of people my age come across this, right? They, they, they don't believe in the voting process. I try to tell them, go out there and vote because it does matter, you know. Um, this is also an issue of equality to me, is that, you know, as a person that participates in our civic duty of voting and, and know, knowing about our elected officials and laws that govern over us, um, I have a duty with my fellow neighbors to let them know that and encourage them to go out and vote. So it's really important to get your vote um, and, and their vote of your friends uh, coming these elections November 3rd, right? If we want to make everything equal, I mean, you guys can see the current environment we live in our society. Um, equality is the one um, area that is, is an, of concern to some. It's an area of a dispute for some. So we need to make sure whatever we can is that we're helping everybody out achieve um, equal opportunity and that we carry the message that equality matters um, as we move forward in our nation. That is my message for you is to please keep every person in mind, right? The poor person, the vulnerable person, you know, the, those that fall through the cracks, um, you know, keep them in mind as you move forward and voting for our elected officials, as you move forward and voting for laws that could affect us. Um, we all matter, you know, we all matter. 
and and uh, everybody should have an opportunity to live a happy and thriving life. Um, and whatever we could do, uh, let's put that forward and let's put our best thinking forward, right? It's not going to take just a vote. It takes active participation in any way you have to, you could contribute, right? You don't necessarily have to be an elected official to contribute. You could be a parent at a school that could voice your observations, uh, propose ideas and innovations that could help. You could be a student in a college, you know, that could help shape the direction of your community. You know, you could be a retired person that now with your wisdom and your years, you could help younger people open their eyes and open their views to help improve community, right? And that's essentially what it is. We are all community and we all need to work to be able to um, foster it, nurture it, and then see it grow and move forward for, for ourselves and our future generations. So my message and support and in, in, in coming together with our democratic movement is participate, vote, and then take action um within your own community it could be a small community it could be your your city it could be your entire county but please take action thank you for your time thank you for that encouragement gilbert next we're going to hear from david neft he started piano lessons at age seven and continued into college he specializes in tunes from the 30s 40s and 50s and now he plays everything by ear and loves listeners requests as he's about to show you david loves playing the blues david i'm sure glad to be here today i'm really uh, honored to be asked uh, i wanted to thank deb for all the work i know it's been an incredible challenge um just a quick uh pun, I guess you could say, um, we need to remember now that we are ruthless, we need to be ruthless and ensure that we go on to a blue wave and incredible victories in all departments uh, come uh, just a few weeks from now. So now I'm going to take you on a little blues excursion, and even wearing my mask.
Thank you, David. California's state Democratic Party is the largest in the nation, second in size only to the National Party. Here is the chair of the California Party, Rusty Hicks. Lake County Democrats, it's great to be with you. And thanks to each and every one of you for supporting this virtual fundraiser today. This is Rusty Hicks with the California Democratic Party. Uh, and I first just want to begin by thanking our uh, chair, Deb Bellman, uh, along with the entire executive board committee for your great, great leadership. And I want to thank all of you. Lake County Democrats have already done so much important work in this important election. Phone banking, postcarding, letter writing, uh, texting, all the great work that you're doing in connection with the California Democratic Party's 2020 coordinated campaign. We know that these are unprecedented times when we are dealing with one challenge after the other, a worldwide pandemic, an economic downturn, an awakening to racial injustice in America, and most recently, directly experiencing the ravages of climate change on our planet. We know that the time, more than ever before, the time is now for a change. And in the next 40 plus days or so, we have the opportunity to make that change, to not only ensure that we keep California blue, but make sure that we keep the House, that we win back the Senate, and yes, that we take back the White House, that we save our democracy for the next generation. So I wanna thank you, Lake County Democrats, for your incredible work. Stay safe, be well, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for that message. I want to uh, remind everybody that on our Facebook site, we have three ways to uh, participate in fundraising for this very, very, very important uh, process of uh, democratically electing people who uh, care for our county, our city, uh, and our country and our world. We are uh, going to hear now from David Claffey uh, as a candidate for Clear Lake City Council. He is a member of the Clear Lake Marketing Committee and on the board of directors for the Highlands Senior Center. He is currently a business content strategist for ServiceNow. Hey everyone, thank you for having me. Uh, this has really been incredible. Um, I'm really excited to see all these great candidates. Gilbert, first time I've, I've gotten to hear from him. Uh, seems like a, a wonderful addition. Everyone knows the great work Jessica is doing and how hard she fights for our community. Uh, and then Zabdi, uh, fellow candidate in Clear Lake, I've gotten to know her well. She is the future of the Democratic Party here in Lake County. So if you haven't had a chance to meet her, take the time. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be her friend. Uh, so my name is David Claffey. I'm running for city council here in Clear Lake. And I think uh, it's a really uh, great time here in the city. Um, I'm focused on two main problems and, and that's business development and housing. Uh, I think for the city of Clear Lake, one thing that we're not doing very well is maximizing the lake. You know, I've had a chance to work at a lot of startups. I've helped founders grow their businesses. And, and this one's easy. Um, we need to really improve both the, the visitor and resident experience. We need to incentivize and incubate the type of businesses that we think will thrive in our city. So that is something that I am looking forward to working with the city. Uh, to, to target five new businesses that we can bring, you know, within the next year or two uh, that will, like I said, thrive. Um, another issue we have is we have a wonderful pool of small business owners here in our city, and they are really experts at what they do, whether that, uh, you know, is, is selling clothing or, or they're a stylist, um, they, they work on furniture. They're really talented, but we ask, our small business owners to be experts in their business and in accounting and in marketing and just a litany of things. Um, I really want to build a group, a, a pool of, I call them professional adventures, where we can start building a mentorship program in partnership with the, the Clear Lake Chamber of Commerce to really help these business owners, give them the resources they need so that they can grow, expand their business and, and really bring up the character of our city. 
And then finally, one of the, the most important issues for me is housing. Housing is the first step in building generational wealth for families. And especially in California where housing prices make it very difficult for new families and, and working class families to start moving forward. Um, we have an opportunity in Clear Lake. We have some of the lowest property values in the country or in, in, in the state. And that can be looked as, at as a bad thing, but it can also be an opportunity. Um, it's an opportunity for us to focus on infill housing and offer affordable investable homes, starter homes that will allow families to begin on the right path. So I think those are two very focused areas that we can do significant, we, we, can, we can focus on and make a significant impact. And we have a city council to do it. I, I think right now it's a, a really strong group. Um, we have people who really care about the community and I hope to, to join them. We have a, a diligent supervisor, everyone knows, uh, who represents Clear Lake. He, he makes himself known and he's fantastic at it. Uh, and we also have an incredible city staff that handles the day to day. It's our job to set the vision and make sure it happens. So uh, I appreciate you giving me the time. I hope to get a chance to meet all of you soon. Thank you, David. And now we have a message from uh, Congress member John Garamendi from Washington, DC. Hi, this is Congressman John Garamendi. I wish I were with you. I wish all of us could get together, but that's just not the way it is. Not with COVID-19 and uh, what's happening all across America and really around the world. What a tragedy. What a tragedy that Trump absolutely let us down as president. And here we are, unable to get together uh, for our annual barbecue. I know you miss it as much as I do, but we've got a lot of work out ahead of us. We've got a, an election coming up here in just a few days, and that means we must dedicate ourselves to getting rid of Donald Trump. We got other things beyond that. Obviously, we got to hang on to our Democratic seats here in California, take back the uh, Senate, and between now and uh, the next uh, inaugural, we're going to have to pass some very important legislation. Legislation that helps communities such as Lake County. Consider for a moment the enormous losses that your community has suffered. Years and years of extensive fires all of the cost of that, all of the disruption, and all of the lost revenue to the county. I cannot understand at this moment why the president doesn't want to help cities and counties and states all across this nation. I guess maybe I can understand. The guy just doesn't get it. He has no empathy, he has no understanding of the way in which America actually works. But I know that you do. And I know that you're going to dedicate yourself to this election cycle. And you're going to do everything that you can to reach out all across this nation, starting here in California with those seats that we took from the Republicans, and then, then moving on around the nation to make sure that Joe Biden has a Democratic Congress and a Democratic Senate. We can put things back together, and we're surely going to build better for the future. I wish I were with you. I wish all of us could get together. But that is a wish that's based all upon your work and my work to make sure that we are successful in this election. So let's make it happen. All the best to each and every one of you. Well, folks, we wind up this fundraiser with a surprise guest, or perhaps not too surprising. We've mentioned him a time or two. Our final performer has been called the best musical satirist working today. In a career spanning more than 30 years, Roy Zimmerman's songs have been heard on HBO and Showtime, and his videos have garnered tens of millions of views on social media. With his satirical folk quartet, The Foreman, he recorded for Warner Brothers Reprise Records. Roy has shared stages with Bill Maher, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, Holly Near, Robin Williams, Arlo Guthrie, John Oliver, The Roches, Andy Borowitz, The Chambers Brothers, Kate Clinton, and George Carlin. As he says, in the current national nightmare, we need to laugh and we need to hope. Roy Zimmerman's signature blend of heart and hilarity has never been more necessary. Some may call it preaching to the choir to sing resistance songs to Democrats, but Roy prefers to think of it as entertaining the troops. Today, we're all troops and all 50 states are on the front line. Here to give us our own USO show is Roy Zimmerman.
Good afternoon, good evening, early evening, everybody. I'll, uh, I'll echo John Garamendi's uh, thought. Thank you so much for the work that you are doing and we're doing here at home. It could be that many of you have heard the most recent uh, song parody that we have up um, called uh, The Liar Tweets Tonight. Um, and I thought maybe we'd start with that because it gives us the big folky opportunity to sing, uh, do a sing along together. I suppose I really should have tuned before, um, before tuning in. Um, but in any case, here we go. <clears throat> there we go. Here we go. You're going to sing along. You're required. Absolutely. <laughs> This one it goes we dee 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 we boat him away we dee 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 we boat him away now you sing boat him away 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 sing it again boat him away 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 in the White House, the mighty White House, the liar tweets tonight. The death toll rises and multiplies as the liar tweets tonight. Sing it again. Put him away, 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 put him away. Sing the harmony of your choice. Put him away, 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 put him it's really Putin who he's saluting from that West Point grandstand. Congratulating him for creating new jobs for the Taliban. Put him away, 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 put him away. Stop the testing right away. Show's over, folks. It'll vanish any day. It's a deep state hoax. Need some help? Don't look at me. You're on your own. I'm protecting Robert E. Lee and Roger Stone. We owe him away. Put him away, put him away, put him away, put him I can't hear you. I mean, I can't hear you. In the country, the cries for justice ring through the streets tonight. But in the White House, the might is right house, the liar tweets tonight. Sing it one more time. In the way, but 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 in the way. All of our attention goes to Trump, right? I mean, that, that's the thing. We, we talk about Trump day and night all, of, all the time, which would please him. Just think about that next time you get into a conversation. That would make him very happy. So maybe we could stop talking about him because, you know, uh, you know, he is the, the he is a shiny object, so to speak. You want to see my impression of Donald Trump? My impression of Donald Trump playing chess. King me. That's his attitude. Anyway, it's not just him, right? It's not just him. He, he surrounds himself with like mindless people. So they can be on the same page at the end of the day, which is how he reads. He's on the same page at the end of the, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so there you go. But I can't, I got one more song for you, you know, and I can't leave you without hope because we, you know, we talked a lot for a while, you might remember about uh, hope and change. Hope and change were big themes in our life, yeah? Um, but you know, especially with, with the, the passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we know that hope uh, is not enough and that change doesn't come without struggle. And we celebrate her and we celebrate all of our, all of the people that are, that are working here in Lake County and at Democratic clubs across America for the struggle that's going on, the struggle for justice and the struggle for a, 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 an equal society, right? So here we go. Um,
It's another one you can sing along with, and thank you for having me in here. I'm very proud to have to call all of you my friends. Was there ever a time more hopeful than back when we were saying, yes, we can? Days of hope and change when we were planning to move forward. Well, I think it's time to hope and change again. Get the kind of feeling we had then. The hope is not enough. Change depends upon one more word. Hope, struggle, and change. Hope, struggle, and change. There's trouble and danger on the road to justice. Gonna keep on hoping, gonna keep my eyes open. The change will come, change will come, but it won't be easy. You know that civil rights didn't fall to us. The moment Rosa Parks stepped on that bus. So many fought and died for racial justice before and after. And suddenly a ray of hope appears, but only after years and years and years. Only because of blood and sweat and tears and yes, even laughter. Hope, struggle, and change. Hope, struggle, and change. Oh, there's trouble and danger on the road to justice. I'm going to keep on hoping, going to keep my eyes open. And the change will come, change will come, but it won't be safe. Elizabeth Cady Stanton never saw a woman's right to vote become the law. Right? hundred years ago? Women everywhere now know the awesome load she carried. And Stonewall didn't settle any fight. There have been a lot of Stonewallers since that night. The Supreme Court has recognized the right of people to be married. Struggle and change. Hope, struggle and change. There's trouble and danger. There's trouble and danger on the road to justice. Gonna keep on hoping, gonna keep on hoping. Keep my eyes open, gonna keep my eyes open. The change will come, change will come, change will come, but it won't be big. We gotta hope and cry, work until we die. We gotta plan and fail, spend the night in jail. We gotta really get pissed, resist, raise a fist. We gotta try to revolutionize. We gotta bleed and need, suffer guaranteed. We gotta sweat, no doubt, get the vote out. We gotta howl, yell, raise a lot of hell. We gotta educate and organize and keep our eyes on the prize. So asking any president to make fundamental change, that's our mistake. Gotta be a giant just awakening from its slumber. You know the moral arc of the universe is bending ever better, never worse. It's almost like the human race rehearsing for its big number. Sing one more time, here we go. Hope, struggle, and change. Hope, struggle, and change. Oh, there's trouble and danger on the road to justice. I'm gonna keep on hoping. Gonna keep my eyes open. And the change will come. Change will come, but it won't be easy. Yeah, the change will come. Change will come, but it won't be free. Oh, the change will come. Change will come from you and me. Thanks for having me. Oh, and thank you. Well, hope, struggle, and change indeed. We certainly want to... Uh, be mindful of our time to really focus on the challenges ahead. We have a journey ahead of us. And uh, on that journey, we have had heroes. We have had Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. We've had John Lewis. And they have inspired us to fight the good fight, to make good trouble, 
And indeed, in the words of that song, hope, struggle, and change is now and is coming, and it is in our hands to make this election work. On our Facebook page there, we have different ways to uh, have the community participate in supporting uh, candidates for the Democratic Party uh, for election, and it's not cheap. We, we need your support. I've got a note here that just recently, uh, just in the last few minutes, somebody so inspired by all of our speakers today who had already donated has donated another $100 and challenges everybody to do the same. We, we, need, to, we need to win this. We need to move us forward as a, as a county, as a state, and as a country. I wanna specifically thank our sponsors today, uh, Congress Member John Garamendi, Congress Member Mike Thompson, State Assembly Member Cecilia Aguiar-Curry, State Senator Mike McGuire. We also thank our union partners, California Teachers Association, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 551, Service Employees International Union, Local 2015, representing the IHSS workers, that's the in-home supportive services, Service Employees International Union, United Healthcare Workers West, SEIU, UHW. Uh, and uh, they have been key players and uh, now we have been called to be key players ourselves. So I challenge all of you as we step forward in the last few days of this election, it is indeed the election of our lifetimes. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for uh, your support of us both today and always. Uh, this is the Lake County uh, Democratic Party uh, fundraiser for 2020 virtual edition signing out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michael, for doing a fabulous job leading us through this. And I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I have been uh, unofficially informed that we actually shattered our fundraising record. And uh, well, shatter might be a dramatic, uh, over dramatic word, but the point is we made it, we did it uh, with your help. And we are all about electing Democrats and building the Democratic community here in Lake County. So. Please, um, if you haven't joined us yet, please go to our website, lakecountydemocrats.org, and please go to the button that Michael referred to on Facebook, which lists not only three different ways you can donate to us, your local party, but it also has links to the California State Coordinated Campaign 2020. And those links will show you how you can get involved from your home, phone banking or texting or writing postcards and help elect people, not just here, but it's across the country. So you might be phone banking from your home uh, through the California State Party. You might be calling voters in swing states. Uh, so it's really important work and it's really, uh, we, we need you. We need an army. We need an army on the ground to get this done and we are coming up with new ways to do it. And the, the California party has been fantastic in pioneering the technology, leveraging it and getting people involved. So thank you and remember to vote and tell them Ruth sent you.